Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is sin. Sin. Now that's a word that a lot of people don't like to hear, don't like to talk about, would love to talk about anything else. And let's be honest, those of us Christians, we'd love to talk about anything else as well. But the truth remains that unless the lost and dying world understands that sin is the cause of an eternal punishment in hell, then we we can't talk about, we really can't, we can't avoid it. Let me put it that way. That's not the only thing that we have to talk about. But just in the same way that we can we can't only talk about the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God, when we talk about that, we have to realize that love, grace, and mercy are shown to sinners, those who could not get to heaven on their own. Now, as Jesus is speaking here in Luke 13, uh, as he's talking to the people, some messengers apparently come up and and they share something that's happened. And, and, and it's amazing that the people there think that because the circumstances have happened to this certain group of people, that that must mean that they're just hellions, that they're just terrible, terrible people. And, and today, if we're not careful, too, we think that sometimes those who have uh, maybe worse circumstances or they go through harder trials and tribulations and, and maybe even worse consequences, we think, well, they must be extra sinners. And that's why they're facing such terrible times. And then so those who aren't doing so bad, then they must be OK. They must not be really that bad. Well, through this, Jesus gives one very clear message about sin. So let's see what he says. Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Are those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. In other words, whatever situation was going on with these Galileans that had offered some sacrifices or exactly what was going on in that. We're not really sure, but Pilate killed them for some reason, something going along with that. And so you would think, okay, well, they must be, you know, really bad sinners. That was kind of the idea that these people had. And so Jesus gives the example, not only of them, but he says, okay, well, what about those even in Jerusalem that died? And he gives another, uh, uh, you know, talking about some other news headline. It says, well, what about those that were killed when that tower fell? Do you think they were worse than everybody else in Jerusalem? So in other words, Jew, Gentile, you know, man, woman, child, adult, doesn't matter your race, doesn't matter your color, doesn't matter anything else. The one thing that matters is that unless you repent of your sin, you will die in it. That's, that's the overwhelming message here and throughout Scripture. Throughout the gospel message is the message that you must repent. That yes, God so loved the world that he sent his son Jesus to die in our place. And that blood covers our sin. But only if, if we repent of our sin, right? Only if we're willing to accept that free gift. You think about that, of how many people have that that gift of Jesus right there, just a a change of heart away. And yet, as some people have explained it, it's a head knowledge and not a heart knowledge. And that that distance of about 16 to 18 inches between their head and their heart, that's the distance between heaven and hell. Is that they stay there in their mind, but they never turn their lives over to Christ from the heart. They're never sincere. The message for us today is let's be careful that we understand that the only people that really put um, grades of sin, and I mean, like we'll say, okay, well, it's just a little white lie. Okay, a lie makes you a liar. 
The same way that if you stole one little thing makes you a thief. Doesn't matter if you stole a car or a pencil, right? You're still a thief. James tells us if you've broken the law in one part, you've broken the whole law. Remember on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, look, if you've even, uh, you know, lusted after another woman, then you've uh, committed adultery. If you've harbored hate in your heart, then you've committed murder. I'm telling you, no matter how we try to uh, to put things in in some kind of priority order, thinking that we can rank ourselves as as people here on Earth, it's very easy to put it all in one category or two categories for that matter. Those that are perfect and without sin and those that have committed at least one sin. Jesus is alone, the only one that has ever walked the face of this planet and sinned not completely perfect. The rest of us fall into the other category. And because a holy God cannot allow us into heaven, because he loved us enough not to leave us that way, but give us the option to trust in Jesus, that's where his love and his grace and mercy come in, come in line. He loved us enough to give us a way out, but only if we would turn and repent from our sin. And repent is, is turning completely around. So you're turning from something and to something. So you turn from your sin and the way that you want to go, and you turn to Christ and the way that he would have you to go. That's the message Jesus is trying to get across to these people here. Don't think because some calamity fell on some certain group of people that, oh, that means that they must be wrong and you must be right. When it's all said and done, we'll all bow before Jesus and in his name. Jesus, the name of Jesus is the only name given under which all men must be saved. So today, if you're not willing to confess your sin, you will die in that sin and face eternal death in hell. But praise God, that does not have to be the case. Will you turn to him today and let him wash your sins away? God bless you. And I pray have a great, great day.